Be seated. What are you looking for? What are you looking for? When you're here, you must have come with some expectations of what might occur, what might happen, what you might get out of it. What are you looking for? Many of you are practicing daily spiritual practices of Bible reading and prayer and other things. When you do those, what are you looking for? Let me tell you about a time I was looking for something. Years back, I started a church. Went through an interview process. The ELCA said, yes, you're the kind of person who can start a church. And they said, here's how you do it. They gave me a binder. It was about this thick. And it said, do that. Okay. All right. Basically, I can sum up the binder in just a couple sentences. What you do is you go knock on a bunch of people's doors and you ask them if they want to be part of a church. Then you invite, if they say yes, you invite them to meetings about the church And then you watch worship and you have a church. Okay, there you go. I was told that the normal success rate for this door knocking thing was about 2 to 3%. So if you knocked on 100 doors, you could expect to get a couple, three families to come to these meetings and then come to the church. So I did this. I went and I did this. Um, It took a while. The community I did it in, the homes were all on one acres or, or plots or bigger. So it, you know, it's not like Livonia where you can just go door to door and get a bunch done. It took a while. Uh, knocked on a thousand doors, got two families. I said, okay, maybe this isn't working so well. We got uh, an expert in this, right? He, I was just a guy trying it. Right? I didn't really know what I was doing. We got this guy to come, and he, this is what he does. Like he, in his retirement, for fun. He goes around the country and he goes to different communities that are starting churches and he knocks on doors and he invites people to these meetings. He does this whole thing. He's like the best of the best. He did a thousand doors. He got two families. And he said, this might not be the best place for this. I said, no kidding. So I went looking for how to start a church. right? And I found a group that this is one of the things that they do. It's not the only thing that they do, but it's one of the things that they do. At the time that I was looking, they were about to start planning 500 churches across Europe. So I thought, maybe they have a clue, right? So they had a conference, and I thought, I'm going to go to this conference, and I'm going to get the recipe. They're going to give me the secret sauce, you know, add a little bit of this, a little bit of that, stir it around, bake for 30 minutes, you get a church, Right? That's what I went looking for. So I went to the conference, and it was conferency, right? I mean, it was like this. There's people sitting, and there's a guy talking, and he did a couple of these large group sessions. And he talked about all kinds of stuff. It was really cool. And uh, then we had small group, where you get together, and you kind of, I didn't know what we were going to do. I assumed we were going to process through this stuff, and somehow, again, At the end of all this conference, I was going to get the magic recipe, the secret formula for how you start a church. That's what I was looking for. So we get to this small group. My small group leader is Steve Cockrum, right? Steve Cockrum is English. He's an English guy. He's from Yorkshire. If you're familiar with the accents, then you can place the accent. He's from Yorkshire. And um, we're going to, Steve says, I want everybody to go around the circle and talk about why you're here. All right, go around the circle, comes to me, and I shared a shorter version of what I just told you about what I was looking for. And Steve looks at me and he says, your problem is obedience. And he moves on to the next person. And I was like, my first reaction was, no, that's not right. You can read whatever you want into that, okay? Uh, You can psychologize that to your heart's content. But I was like, what? Your problem is obedience. And then he just moved on. I was like, I I can't be right. Because, you know, I was starting a church, right? So I thought about, okay, well, why am I starting this church? 
What's my, what's my motive? Well, I'm starting a church because I could see at that time what we're seeing kind of all around, which is that Lutheran churches, you know, the number of Lutheran churches is declining and attendance overall is declining. And so that's the trend. And I thought, you know, we're going to start a new church and it's going to be a new way of being church and it's going to fix everything that's broken and we're going to, you know, the kingdom of God is going to be great and amazing and we're going to do all this, this stuff. And I kind of realized that I thought I knew how to do all that. And the more I thought about it, the more I realized that this new church thing was really more about me than anything. It wasn't really about God. It was about what I wanted to do and all the things I thought were smart and clever and what have you. And I thought about that. And I thought, oh boy, Steve Crockham is right. My problem is obedience. That was not what I went looking for. Do you know what you really need to have to start a church? Obedience. You really have to be obedient to God. Steve was right. The church didn't make it. I don't know that the church was ever going to make it. But I went to this conference looking for something, and I found something else. And that thing, that awareness of the need and importance of being obedient to God, has been a gift to my life ever since. It has made my life better. It has made my ministry better. It has made everything about me better better. It was what I needed, but it was not what I was looking for. While these disciples in this story were asked by Jesus, what are you looking for? And we had a discussion about this Tuesday morning at Bible study. In case you didn't know, there's a Bible study in the Abbey on Tuesdays at 9.30 and you're all invited. And at that Bible study, uh, Sherry Pearson made a really interesting and astute observation. She was talking about these disciples, and she said these disciples who followed Jesus, that Jesus asked, what are you looking for? They were originally, before they started following Jesus, they were disciples of John the Baptist. It tells us that. It says they were disciples of John the Baptist. What is a disciple? A disciple is someone who wants to know what the rabbi knows, so they can do what the rabbi does, so they can be like the rabbi. The goal of the disciple is essentially to clone the rabbi in themselves, to be completely like the rabbi in as many ways as possible, so that nobody can tell the difference. Say the same things, do the same things, teach the same things. That's the idea. That's what a disciple does. Well, what was John the Baptist all about? What was his purpose? What was his goal? What was his mission in life? You know this. The goal of John the Baptist, his mission in life, was to prepare the way of the Lord. Right? That was what it was all about. He was going to prepare the way for the Messiah so that when the Messiah comes, he can follow along and be with the Messiah and bring the kingdom of God. That was John's whole purpose in life, which means that it was the whole purpose in life of these disciples. John's disciples were there to prepare the way of the Lord. They were there so that they could see the Messiah when the Messiah came, so they could follow along and they would bring the reign of God. So the Messiah comes literally walking along and these disciples, whose entire purpose and mission and reason for being in life was to identify and follow the Messiah, the Messiah literally comes walking along and they don't know it. They miss it. John has to say, hey, look, that's the Lamb of God. And then they go, oh, okay, and off they go. And Jesus says, well, what are you looking for? Because whatever they were looking for in the Messiah, it obviously wasn't who he was, or they would have known it, or they would have seen it. They were obviously expecting something different. So Jesus asks them, well, what, what are you looking for? Because it ain't me. And we see this over and over. You read through the Gospels, and there's all these moments 
where the disciples think they know what Jesus is about, think they know what he's like, think they know what he's going to do, and they get it wrong. Right? One example is uh, the Transfiguration story, which, if you don't know that one, that's okay. Uh, But the Transfiguration story, Jesus and the disciples go up on top of a mountain, and God appears, and the disciples are like, hey, this is great, we're going to build a house. And Jesus is like, no! That's wrong! Another great one is when Jesus says, uh, I'm going to go to Jerusalem, and I'm going to suffer, and I'm going to die. And the disciples are like, no, you can't do that. And he's like, you don't get it. Right? We see this over and over and over in the Gospels, that what the disciples are looking for is not who Jesus is. But then, right, it changes. Jesus goes to Jerusalem. He's crucified. He dies. He rises again, and all of a sudden, you read Acts, and these disciples, man, they're just like Jesus. They are polished, they're articulate, they're able to heal people, they're able to do all this stuff that they couldn't before. Because what they were looking for wasn't what they needed. They were looking for a Messiah who was going to do all kinds of things that Jesus wasn't going to do. And what they really needed was someone to suffer and die and rise again. What they were looking for wasn't what they needed, but what they needed is what God gave them. And I don't know what you are looking for. Honestly, I don't even know why you show up. Like, any time someone comes here, it's, I'm baffled by it. I don't know why you don't just get up and walk out during these sermons. Like, I don't, I don't get it. I don't. It, it astonishes me. Nobody throws tomatoes. Nobody gets up and leaves. I, I, it, I don't understand it. It's baffling. But you are looking for something. We, we all are. I don't know what that is. And I don't know what you really need, either. What I know is we're all looking for something And God's going to bring what you need, and I just don't want you to miss it. I just don't want you to miss it. I don't want you to miss it because you're looking for the wrong thing. So, whatever it is that you're looking for, I just want to encourage you to be open to whatever God might be doing that you don't expect. Whatever might be happening that isn't what you think it is, might be God up to something. Well, whatever it is you're looking for, whatever it is you're seeking, know this, that God will give you what you need. Amen.